the key here is as much as we are measuring the glycation or the the sugar being splat on your hemoglobin it also splats on everything else i think the whole goal of health is not to be rigid and not enjoy life the goal is to find a lifestyle that works for your long term health we don't tend to think of the tennis elbow we don't tend to think of the meniere's disease we don't tend to think of i'm not thinking straight as maybe my red blood cells are gucked up with glucose and I should be looking at my hemoglobin A1C. We're not thinking like that. Mm -hmm. And yet we need to be. So Fast Like a Girl, it's ready for pre-order now. I hope this book changes your life the way the information has changed hundreds of thousands of women that have applied it. From the bottom of my heart, enjoy and let's get healthy together. Well, and this is what I love about hemoglobin A1C is that um, we in the keto movement and the fasting movement, we get so caught on ketones. But what yeah. I learned in our conversation was how powerful hemoglobin A1C is. And you really are one of the very few people that are out there really talking about the power of this one particular number. Mm -hmm. And so a lot of people, here was a lot of the questions. What if I'm at like 5.5 and we talked about you know, you said you want to get to 4.5. So what, you know, I, I, a lot of people were like, well, I'm hovering around five, but if I want to get to a lower four, how do I go about do that, doing that? I'm, I'm right. curious. Your thoughts. Well, let's, let's do full disclosure as a preparation for KetoCon. I did my own point of care test as a way to teach my staff. Here's how we do testing. So everybody on the staff got tested and honest to God, I haven't checked my own A1C in probably, I don't know, four or five years. And it was in the fours the last time I, <laughs> and now, um, well, it's 5.5, which is way higher than I want it to be. But it's a reflection that, yeah, guess what? I'm human too. And moving across the country at 50 with three kids in tow and four businesses, it's taken its toll. I'm not perfect. But let me show you how I'm going to get that A1C down from 5.5 back to something that really is um, is an important place to be. And I think that just opens up the door to say, I do a lot of things, right? I live this life. I post numbers. I go live with my own numbers on a live show and share with you what I do. And even I have had times where I deserve, a, you know, a, a treat. I, I don't like the alcohol sugars. They tear up my gut. So I have real sugar when I fall off of the weight, you know, when I don't go, when I'm not when I'm eating normal, when I'm just saying, okay, I did go on an actual cruise. Now, that wasn't as tempting as it sounds, but truly that human part of behavior is, uh, I didn't go from 4.7 or whatever I was the last time I checked to 5.5 in four months. That's been a four or five year process. And right. so I think the, the, the backstory for when people show up and their A1C is somewhere in those low fives and they're like, I'm fine. I'm not even pre-diabetic, which is supposed to be about 5.7, you know, that's pre-diabetes. I, I tell them the key here is as much as we are measuring the glycation or the, the sugar being splat on your hemoglobin, it also splats on everything else. Like in one of the uh, examples I give, uh, uh, the, the gentleman had a, a crick in his neck that always was the first thing to hurt when he would sleep wrong. So he blamed it on a pillow or not sleeping right. But really, if you get down to why does a certain injury recur, um, you can link it to glycation. Uh, another thing he had was tennis elbow. And he knew that if he did this certain part of his job, that his elbow was going to hurt the next few days. Well, why is that? That's because as much as that sugar splat onto parts of his body or onto his hemoglobin, it also splat onto his body. Why, why does somebody with Meniere's disease or chronic ringing in the ears happen more frequently when those A1Cs get higher. Because we're not just glycating your hemoglobin, you're glycating those little bitty bones in that inner ear as well. Right. So when you look at an A1C that, again, is not ideal, it just warns me, you're human, <laughs> tighten it right. up, get back on uh, track. And and it's it's a slow churn. It, it, the average is not easy. But yep. it is also something you shouldn't go, what, six years without checking? <laughs> yeah. Wait, and so I, there's a couple of things to unpack on that. Um, for starters, any doctor that is living the principles that they're teaching in my book is a doctor I want to follow. And yeah, 
to your point, we're human as well. And I think the whole goal of health is not to be rigid and, and, and not enjoy life. The goal is to find a lifestyle that works for your long-term health. And what I love about hemoglobin A1C and what you're talking about is that we don't tend to think of the tennis elbow. We don't tend to think of the Meniere's disease. We don't tend to think of I'm not thinking straight as maybe my red blood cells are gucked up with glucose and I should be looking at my hemoglobin A1C. We're not thinking like that. Mm -hmm. And yet we need to be. So right. what would you do if you want to get yours from 5.5? Like if you were to put yourself on a plan for the next month to get mm -hmm. it down to 0.5, what would you do? Well, that's exactly what we did. So there were three of us in the group that had ones that we were A, willing to share and B, said, okay, I'm going to make a change. Mine was 5.5. Five. We had one that was 5.7 and one that was 5.4. Uh, I think those are the three numbers. And we all said, okay, in the process of improving people, we talk about, um, you know, I, I call it a keto continuum. And the reason it's a continuum is not everybody shows up to this lifestyle with the, with the baggage of 30 years of elevated blood sugar and what that does do to your tennis elbow and your heart and your uh, the, the amount of pathology associated with metabolic syndrome, inflammatory processes, it goes unchecked. And although as an internist, I can fill about 15 lines full of a diagnosis, what what really matters when people say, how do I correct something is where have you come from? Mm -hmm. So knowing that I've had, you know, probably, I don't know, 30 plus pounds that I shouldn't have had on that were on for a season and then eventually came off. But, but since 2015, pretty solidly in the ketogenic space with a mm -hmm. gradual slight improvement over those years. But on the keto continuum, I, uh, you know, we talk about you know, the first wave of keto being easy where people lower their carbs, they produce ketones, they have this tsunami of ketones feel great. And then your metabolism adjusts to that and you need to provide a stress to uncouple it. So the next place we go, once I can say that they're keto adapted, once their fat hormones are out of the ditch, they're just, they're measurable at least, is we then move on to two meals a day. Eat those, eat those 20 mm. carbs or less, two meals a day. And so I've been past that for quite a some time. I've been at really a four hour eating window for the better part of two and a half years. Um, and in that two and a half years, I had a very nice, lovely, one of my favorites, <laughs> uh, fat filled coffee in the morning, which is something I tell people, you'll get to a certain place where you're not going to see improvement. You're going to need to uh, step over a threshold. One of those thresholds is, um, you, you, I mean, this, the, the, the headline is you're trying to uncouple their mitochondria, which is out of the sciencey world. But really that means you're trying to stress their metabolism. And you can do that by narrowing the window, but it means that inside that window is where all the calories and sweetener and gum, mastication being really important part of something people don't think about when it comes to stimulating insulin, not in healthy people, in mm. people who've had a problem. And so that, you know, they, they don't start out at a four hour window. We start out at an eight hour window, but we need a clean eight hour window. Meaning in my situation where I would put that coffee inside the eight hour window, that's when the timer would start. And when it would stop, I need to zip my lips. Even if I'm about to serve supper, uh, if you want to reverse the process, you've got to close the window. Right. And so learning how to live inside that window is a metabolic stress. 